Okay, this is a help video for the permutation combination uh, fundamental counting principle probability makeup test. If you didn't do so well on the first test, you can watch this video, help yourself out, and uh, get a better grade on your last test. So, uh, first of all, it is formula based, so it's going to be hard for you to um, help each other if, if that's what you were planning on doing. You'll have to do your own work. Uh, you'll need a calculator You get 60 minutes and you only get one shot. So I'm going to give you some hints here and, and we'll go from there. So some of these are just problems you're going to have to look up, like when order matters um, and items are not repeated, when order matters um, and, and they are just some different formulas. Those should be in your notes. Uh, that was question one, two, three. Um, you can look up that formula on three. You can look up that formula on four. Here are some evaluation with the factorial button on your calculator. You can just do those on your calculator and input those. And then we get down to some of these where you have to uh, actually apply some of these formulas. And these are really the ones I'm going to focus on. So some of these I use factorials. Some of these I use NCP, NPR, uh, just some of the different formulas. So I'm going to try to help you out with that. So the first one, you're buying a new car. This is question eight. You're buying a new car and want to decide between three body styles, five colors, and five models. How many different um, options are, the, are available? And I would use the fundamental counting principle on this. I got three options, I got uh, five uh, colors, and I got five models. And if you can fill in the number of ways, and by the way, you have three body styles and you have five colors and you have five models so that and sign would tell you what to do in between those you should be able to crank that on your calculator and get it without too much of a problem question nine on a multiple choice test each question has two possible answers you make a random guess on the first three questions what's the probability that you're correct uh, correct on all three so uh, this one I think isn't two uh, multiple choice test I think I made this uh, however many this could be a, a lot of different numbers. It could be two possible answers. It could be three possible answers. But if you have two possible answers, there's a one in two chance that you're going to get it right. If you had five possible answers, there'd be a one in five chance that you'd get it right. This one has two possible answers. So I have three blanks, and there's two possible answers. So the probability I would get this one right would be one in two. I'd have a one in two chance. Or if there's five answers, I'd have a one in five chance. So I have one in two, one in two, and one in two on this. Depending on your form, those might be different, but um, I want to get it right and right and right. So you should be able to do that one right now with that little formula right there. Uh, number 10, um, uh, how many ways can a coach create a nine player batting order from 11 players on a team? So you have an order that is important. You can do that one. Number 11, how many ways can a coach select five starters for a basketball team from the 14 on his team? On your test, those might be different. But um, in basketball, there is no batting order. Order does not matter. It's just five people out on the court. Uh, so that would tell you to use either the NPR or NCR. You'll have to figure that out. But on this one, the order, the order that they're out there doesn't matter. Uh, number 12, in how many ways can eight horses finish in first, second, and third? Those are specific places. First is different than second and different than third, so the order would matter. The, out of the eight horses, the order would matter for those three. Number 13, how many ways can you choose four people for a subcommittee? Committee implies that you're placing people on this group and the order that you place them on that committee doesn't matter. Committee tells you right away whether to use a permutation or combination. You can go figure that one. That's an NCR, NPR one. Number 14, what's the probability for a person who shoots trap to hit at least 24 out of 25 targets if the person is typically a 98% shooter around the three decimal places? All right, so this is one of the harder ones. You wanna get 24 out of 25, uh, hit at least. At least would mean I could find the probability that I hit 24, or, so or would be plus, I could also find the probability that I hit 25. Um, and what you have to do is you have to, you have to work out both uh, independently and then add them together. And this is the binomial probability. It's the NCR 
times p to the uh, power, p to the r power, times 1 minus p to the n minus r power, n minus uh, r power. And then you're going to have to do that twice, n c r, p to the r, 1 minus p to the n minus r. Now, what goes in for your probability is you're a 98% shooter, so that's your 98%. And the first one, we want to hit 24. So I have 25 choose 24. I got that 98% to the R power, and then 1 minus 98 to the N minus R power. And we did this quite a bit in, in class. So I'm going to let you guys try to, try to fill those in. But that's, that's the formula that you would use for that problem. And then the last one. If no one knows my birthday, let's say zero of you, like, knew my birthday and you were just going to guess. If no one knows my birthday, what's the probability at least one person in a group of 30 will guess my birthday, given that all guesses are independent of each other? What that means is um, two people could guess the same one because they don't know what anybody else guessed. Independent means, hey, um, everybody could, you know, theoretically everybody could guess the same number um, and, uh, or the same birthday and, and have it. So, the probability that at least one is the hard one. And whenever I do the probability of least one, I do one minus the probability of none. Well, if they're independent events, the probability that the first person would not guess it right, that would be none, would be, well, he would have 364 out of 365. That would be the probability that you would guess wrong. That'd be the first person. Now the second person is independent of that, so he could guess the same way. So he has 364 out of 365 choices also. You can kind of see how that works, and there's 30 of them. Okay, and you could do the math from there. That would probably be the probability in class of 30 that nobody would get it right. So nice short video, I hope this helps. You should do pretty well on this one. I set it up for you to be successful. Uh, take the quiz. It, I had it set up for 60 minutes. It should not take 60 minutes. You should be in good shape. Uh, good luck and go to work.